Hi, Five Baristas. Hey, welcome. It's Sunday and there's glare on the glasses. I'm taking them off for a minute. All right, you get no makeup, messy hair, Stacy, today. Hi, thanks for joining. I'm so glad you guys are here. So today I'm going to share with you about my art journals. Um, and, and the reason why I'm sharing about my art journals is because I'm getting ready to release a membership um, it's probably, honestly, it's probably going to be after the first of the year. I would love to release it sooner, but you know what? Holidays. <laughs> there you have it. So anyway, um, yeah, I'm, I've got a membership coming up and it's going to be about art journaling. And I know people think, well, what, what does art journaling have to do with fiber art? I'm here to tell you, um, this is the one thing that has actually helped me solidify um, doing art, works of art. It's helped me figure things out. It's helped me get clear on ideas. It's helped me harness inspirations. And it's something that I learned to do. Whoop, okay. It's something that I learned to do um, when I was in art school. Uh, when I was in college, the first thing they did was show us how to, to work through ideas using a sketchbook. So this is very similar to that, but I've kind of merged it in with like some of the mixed media art journals that you see, as well as a lot of times it's outright like my planner. So, you know, keeping everything in one book I found helps me keep it in front of my face. Now, that being said, I'm gonna be honest, I fall off the art journaling wagon all the time. And I used to have a 30 day art journal challenge and mainly that was for me, <laughs> to be perfectly honest, because I would need to have uh, challenge myself to get back on the wagon um, because sometimes I think I just don't want to journal but you know what it's once I do it it's great even if I'm doing something really simple so today I'm going to share with you some of my books and and also share with you some of the ideas that kind of came from it um, and uh, and and I'm going to talk to you about ways that I use my art journal and ways that I don't use my art journal because when you're doing freeform weaving, sometimes I feel um, I don't want to plan that out too much because I think freeform weaving is all about being in the moment, but I do actually account for it in a certain way. So let me show you some of the stuff and a little bit about some of the techniques. All right, I'm going to see if I can switch the camera gracefully. I'm using the phone today. So, all right, let's see. All right, so here we are. This is my big old drafting table. Let me put my glasses back on. All right, so this, this right here is my current journal. Um, and you can see this is a project that I'm currently working towards. Uh, this is one that I was doing in uh, kind of alongside uh, some, of my, uh, uh, some of my fellow fiber artists in a, a study group that I belong to. And this is one of the parts of the pieces that I'm working through. So you can see here that I've got lots of, of the ideas, you know, the, the information sketched out. Let me see if I can hold it up a little bit. Some of the information sketched out, um, so notes that I take. And so this is me working through that piece. And you can see here, let's see, let me go back through this is a rough sketch of that piece that I wo I've been weaving on. Um, the one uh, that was in last week's uh, live cast, or week before, week before the last live cast. So it's, and it's, it's all in white, so you can see. And here I'm planning out how I'm gonna do the headers. And then sometimes I just do some doodles, you know? Here's planning out some website stuff. This is from last year when I went to the George O'Keefe exhibit and I wanted to harness some ideas you know this is the painting and some of the things that I saw at the open reception now this piece this is something that I was sketching out um, that I wanted to recreate and that actually turned into this piece so you can kind of see how I kind of was planning it out, but I'm, I'm not getting too granular about what's, what the inside of that's gonna be. And I'll, you can see I planned out another, another circle right here and that, that just didn't happen. So there's that. Let's see, you can also see here is 
these are some of the gigaws that I was working on that to add as embellishments. And oh, did I put? Oh wait, here we go. Some of those embellishments here, and you can see I've made. Here's some of these, right here that I I made, and these are things that I've used in some of my art. Um, and this these actually are these but i'm not really thrilled about about the color of these i don't like the white on the side and the and the glaze i think it's too much of a contrast all right let me show you some. oh these are some some dish towels i was uh the dish towels and that i did in um vlogmas last year this is me working out the colors and i was thinking about doing a pattern for them and and i ended up not going with that but I did use those colors. All right, so this piece, this is this is me trying these out. And again, I'm not really crazy about the glaze color here. I think I wanna go with just the, the off-white, but these will be the center of them. This is like a loom, just like this piece here. So, and I want to, you can see here, how I wanna connect them together so they almost look like an old granny square, square afghan. So that's what I'm working on with that. And here, these are glaze notes. These are notes when I'm at the studio and I use the different glazes and I want to remember what I did. So here, here it says, I don't think this is the, oh yeah, this one. These, this is bamboo ash mat, I think. I could be wrong. I have to double check. <laughs> It could be another one that I did. I'm not sure. All right. So, I mean, and there's just different things. I mean, sometimes I make an art page. Sometimes I just paste some stuff and do some doodles. I mean, sometimes I work out some ideas. Now, this piece, this is this one I was planning out. I had an idea to make this piece. And actually, this piece came to be, and I'll put a link um, or a picture in the show notes, but this piece actually has been, is sitting in its second show right now. Um, it's at the, uh, show, it's in a, an exhibit that's at the National Humanities Center, um, and it also spent a, about a month in a gallery in Durham. But then here's the second piece. You can see this right here, and I've been working on the dress for this piece. So, so that's where that's come out. Let's see what else I have in here. Oh, here's, this is what I want to do with an indigo, uh, a skirt I have, doing some batik with some indigo that I have. And here's just, you know, a page where I'm just kind of mucking about. You know, now this, and I'll put a picture again in the show notes, but it's, this was the, if you got the notice about this live cast, this was some Zen doodles that I was playing around with, and it turned into a clay rattle that I made. Um, I don't have that rattle anymore. It was uh, given as a gift. So, so uh, yeah, but that came to be. And here's just more playing around. So you can see, I mean, a lot of times it's about creating details that might end up in my work later, or, you know, just working out some colors or just playing with shapes or just you know, just in general. I mean, these this has no specific stuff. And I've, I've posted some of, you know, some ephemera that I had kept. This is ephemera from my trip to Seattle. Um, I did a show in Seattle and I kept all the memorabilia from that. And so I've started to kind of paste it into this journal. Anyway, all right, so then I'm going to also share with you this journal. This was the one that I was working on before this. Wait, I think this was the one I was working on before this. <laughs> oh yeah, this has a bunch of my clay notes, you know, when I was working on mugs. So you can see I was playing with some ideas with some face mugs. And even though it's not exact, this is what they turned out to be. I mean, this one has some glaze issues. And then here's another one that got stuck to the tile. So all, them, all my messed up cu uh, cups I end up using, you know, here. But this, this was when I was first in the clay studio. And here's some notes on some of my clay headers. These 
this is what these are. So where I would take notes on what they were. Um, but here, I mean, here I'm working out ideas of how I want my glazes to look and what would, what would the insides be. And then this stuff is just some doodles I was playing around with, you know, playing around with just little art ideas and they might show up. I don't know. They might show up in, in a patch as an, uh, an embellishment on my artwork, or it might show up as a stamp that I carve that I use, you know, for a clay piece, or it just might be just something that I, I put in there. So here's some more ideas for embellishing and using these clay headers, these clay hangers for, for my work. And I, I hang the pieces off of these. See, that's a picture of my nephew when he was little and playing around with some rubber stamps. So, you know, sometimes it's just, you know, it's not just even that I paint or I draw. So a lot of times I paste things. And for the most part, that's because, let me show you this, because I'm really kind of lousy at drawing, honestly. I'm not, a, I'm, I'm good at doodling, but I'm not really good at drawing, drawing. But I love using uh, uh, washi tape just to add, it's a quick way to add some textures and some some other ideas. And, and just that kind of ephemera idea, I feel like I'm hoping that I translate the same idea and the same feeling, you know, into my work. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll paint a bunch of backgrounds, you know, and not necessarily work on a spread in that day, you know, and then maybe I'll go back and add some tape, but you know, then it becomes a foreground for different things I might do. You know, some brainstorming. I like, I love making pockets. You know, here's stuff that either I'll just leave in this pocket or I might paste it in my book later. You know, just little stuff. Here's more, some more clay notes. This card, I love this little postcard. So I keep that there. You know, some more doodling, stuff like that. So, let me show you this as well. This, I'm playing with some ideas. There's a woman in my, um, in my class, in my uh, study group, and she makes these looms. She does book binding, you know, journal making, and she made these looms. And so I'm trying to figure out a way to incorporate that into my journal. And then what I'll do is either I'll, you know, place stuff that I might find. Let's see. You know, you can, it doesn't, well, this, when you close the book, it's not gonna be ideal, but you can, you can put all kinds of stuff, you know. Weave, do a little mini weaving right there. So I also found, right here, these. And I'll put a link to these on, uh, on uh, Amazon. I mean, on the show notes, they're from Amazon. But these are also some, but they're a little thicker. I like these better because they're a little thinner. But these, and I've, I made a little pocket in my book where that just kind of slides in there. And that, that uh, that's a little piece. So, so yeah, I'm trying to figure out ways to incorporate those because I would definitely love to have those when I do that workshop in Taos. Oh, here's my washi tape collection. You know, and and this is this is my little paint palette that I take with me. I love traveling with this. As a matter of fact, I took this with me to New Orleans, and I'll probably take with me um, when we go to uh, when we go visit my in-laws for Thanksgiving. So I usually take that, and then maybe a glue stick. I don't know. I probably, I'll probably just glue things later and then I'll just bring a simple pen and it, as simple as something like this or even these Sharpies. I like these Sharpies. These are great. And I'll put links to those in the show notes. But yeah, I mean, that's, so that's just what I use my book for. I mean, it's kind of a catch-all but it's, it's also, you know, as I, I add little things, I get clear, you know, this little, little bits of, of inspiration that I love. I love this tape, color washes, you know, and, and it all contributes, you know, as I start to just collect these ideas and just, 
This is a way that I can easily make art with no pressure and, and add it to my book. And it either it makes it into, either it makes it into my work later or it doesn't. I mean, sometimes this is as far as it gets and that's fine. But sometimes, you know, this, this translates into, into something that I'll use later on. Now check this out and I'll put a link to this in the show notes. This I've been kind of putting off working on this book, but it might have to be my next one I work on. This book, and it's from, this is, I think I got it at Michael's. It's a, uh, I can't think of what the woman's name is. Anyway, I'll put a link to it in the show notes. But um, this, it has all these different kinds of pages. It has this wonderful rag watercolor paper you see I've already started a, a little bit in there and then it has some burlap pages here's some more watercolor it has a canvas page look at that more watercolor canvas watercolor burlap oh wait I think it has oh yeah and then it has some craft paper pages so yeah this one I can't wait I think the challenge of having those backgrounds is going to be wonderful to to work with that so anyway the two the longer to weave on those card looms in your journal or for short sturdy uh collar stiffer they um if they still make them yeah you know and, and that's what i probably would do is just use either just a regular weaving needle or and I, do i even have it here i don't think i do or a tapestry needle you know like the i like the chibis Wait. Is this my chibis? No. I don't, this, this is what my chibis came in, but these aren't my chibis. But yeah, just some little tapestry needles. I think these are like, this is like a chibi with the little bent tips. I don't know if you guys can see that. It has the little bent tip. Um, but yeah, I probably would just use that for, for smaller weavings. But you know, even, there was a woman that was in that study group and she had gone to Maine um, to process through her mother's stuff after she passed her mother's estate and she had things like seagull feathers and and pieces of fabric from her mother's um, clothing and just interesting things that were woven into the into into this piece I mean I could even take you know even I mean I don't know if I would want a, a, this big of a piece but you know you could even just kind of put something like that and then maybe let's see what else I got over here yeah, here's some little, little worry people you know and you can start to to work on something and then even just put you know some strips of fabric or if there's a leaf that you find I mean you know, think outside the box. It doesn't even necessarily, but you know, if you start to use it to hold your ephemera, I mean, heck for that matter, where's that, uh, that postcard that I had? You know, if I wanted to even take part of this, and weave it back behind there. I mean, there's all kinds of things you could do. I mean, and then and then how would you translate that into your fiber art? See what I'm saying? I mean, maybe it's that you actually include a feather in your fiber art, but how would you translate this? I mean, this might become, you know, you pick up some of the colors in your weaving, you know, or, or maybe you use that rope technique that I, uh, in lace and open space that I have to mimic these, this, uh, this little worry person. So, yeah, I mean, it's a whole nother dimension and I, I'm really excited to kind of try and play with that. So we'll see what happens. Are right, nice, but thin, but you need the threader. All right, so that, I mean, that's what I've got going on as far as journaling goes. Okay, well, let me turn this around. No, here I am. Oh, let me take my glasses off. So yeah, so as far as as art journaling goes, like I said, I mean, 
it's it's a wonderful way to like hammer out ideas but it's also a wonderful way to incorporate a no pressure creative play i mean i just shared with you my journal pages but there's some journal pages that i'll never share i mean some of them are really personal to me so i mean it's it's all up to you it's up to you what you share and it's a way to really get messy it's a way to try out you know some ideas that you might not be okay with i mean not all the pages are going to be great but the thing about the art journal is that if you hate it you can always either tear the page out or paste something over it so anyway so the class that i've got coming up or in it's i say class it's actually a membership but within the membership there's going to be some lessons and then there's going to be like a monthly challenge and monthly uh, live type thing so um within that membership what what i do is i i i kind of go back to some of the stuff that i learned and you know we talk about you know harnessing ideas whether it's just doing your daily play but then what if you wanted to take some of the, those ideas and flesh them out and we're going to go over how you take ideas from your art journal and the different stages that i definitely use if I'm going to flesh out an idea to to get to uh, a piece of art. So that's what's coming up. Um, like I said, it's probably going to be after the first of the year, but I'm going to put in the show notes and in the description of this YouTube video um, the sign up for to get noticed when that goes live. And the whole reason why I'm doing this, other than it's just a great practice to have, and I encourage anybody, if it resonates, I mean, some people just don't, don't do it. I mean, and that's fine. I mean... It might not be your your thing but if it is it's gonna totally change the way you make art i know it did for me um so if um i'm off track so i'm going to put the, the the registration in the and the in the description and in the show notes and and that's going to go live like after the first of the year i still am working out the technical stuff <laughs> for for doing a membership site Anyway, but that's what I got. So, um, I'm probably not going to go live next week just because it's the hol the weekend after the holiday and we are, um, please show a little work with this little card loom. I definitely will. And I'm going to post, um, I'll post where I got the, the ones, the brown ones, and then the white ones I... I'm going to I'm going to post a link to their Etsy site, but they're kind of still working out um some of the stuff as far as the production of that. So if they don't have them on that Etsy site, just just put a little heart on that Etsy site and keep track of it cuz they they really are wonderful. Um and it's it's, you know, these fiber artists who are also bookbinders. So it, they they are doing some really cool things. Anyway, but this is all um leading up to this this membership I've got, um, I'll be teaching the same material in Taos in September, at the end of September of, two, of 2020. And the information for that's going to be coming um, at the end of this year or at the beginning of the year. It's coming up in about a month or so. They're going to be releasing the information on that. So that's what I got for you guys. All right. Thanks for joining me. And I'm going to look and see if there's questions. Uh, Epiphany London, Gail, Kathy, and Maria, thanks for joining. Yay! Uh, please show a little work on the loom. Doll maker needles are nice, but and thin, but you need a threader. Yeah, yeah, and I think, I mean, if you don't tension the warp too tight on it, um, because the type of stuff that I would want, I want to weave into it might be like, I mean, a lot of kind of weird found stuff. Um, but yeah, the doll, and like I said, the chibis, the big tapestry, the tapestry needles work great. I'll put a link to the ones that I would use for it. Um, because either those tapestry or, um, even just the weaving needles. I know Susan Bates makes a weaving needle that I used for something I did recently for you guys. I can't remember what it was. <laughs> Anyway, but I'll post a, a link to that, um, the, uh, the weaving needles that I used. Oh, it was for the um, hem stitching. Yeah, I used a regular, because uh, it was a longish needle. But I don't even think you would need a long needle. You, I mean, just doing, 
you know, a small needle and taking sections of it would work too. All right, so I'll post those. Anyway, so thanks for joining, and I will, if, I will not see you next Sunday, but I will see you probably the Sunday after that. All right, enjoy. Have a good holiday. Happy Thanksgiving. Talk to you later.